Revisiting Tragedy, a critical examination of Lifetime's documentary on Nicole Brown Simpson. Lifetime's upcoming two-part documentary, The Life and Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, aims to shed new light on a case that gripped the world nearly three decades ago. Scheduled to premiere on June 1, 2024, the series promises exclusive details, home videos, and interviews with pivotal figures, including Nicole's sisters, Dominique, Denise, and Tanya Brown. As we critically examine the content and implications of this project, several key points emerge, warranting a deeper analysis of its potential impact and the ethical considerations at play. The documentary's ambitious scope is evident from the outset. According to executive producer Jesse Daniels, the creators conducted 50 interviews and reached out to countless others to construct a comprehensive and dynamic narrative. This extensive research underscores the producer's commitment to presenting a multifaceted portrayal of Nicole Brown Simpson's life and death. However, it also raises questions about the selection of interviewees and the perspectives that will be emphasized. Will the documentary genuinely offer new insights, or will it rehash familiar narratives under the guise of exclusive content? The timing of the documentary's release, coinciding with the 30th anniversary of Nicole Brown Simpson's death, is both poignant and strategic. Anniversaries of high-profile events often reignite public interest, providing an opportunity for media outlets to capitalize on renewed curiosity. While this timing can enhance the documentary's visibility and impact, it also risks appearing exploitative, particularly if the project prioritizes sensationalism over substance. One of the documentary's most significant promises is its focus on Nicole's life beyond her tragic end and her tumultuous relationship with O.J. Simpson. Denise Brown's statement to Variety highlights a crucial intention to amplify Nicole's voice and story rather than centering the narrative around the infamous trial or her ex-husband. This approach is commendable as it humanizes Nicole and acknowledges her existence beyond her victimhood. However, the execution of this intent will be critical. Will the documentary succeed in portraying Nicole as a complex individual with her own aspirations, struggles, and achievements, or will it inadvertently reduce her to a symbol within a larger, already well-trodden story? The inclusion of personal elements, such as childhood home videos and family interviews, aims to provide a more intimate and nuanced portrayal of Nicole. This personal touch can foster a deeper emotional connection with the audience, allowing them to see Nicole as more than just a name in a headline. However, it also raises ethical concerns about the privacy and consent of those depicted, particularly in a context as sensitive and emotionally charged as this. The filmmaker's responsibility to handle these materials with care and respect cannot be overstated. The documentary's trailer, which previews both Nicole's early life and the harrowing events surrounding her murder, sets the tone for an emotionally charged viewing experience. Dominique Brown's remark, it's been 30 years, maybe it's time to rekindle the flame of Nicole, encapsulates the delicate balance the documentary must strike between remembrance and exploitation. The use of the word rekindle suggests a desire to reignite public interest, which, while well-intentioned, could be perceived as commodifying Nicole's tragedy. Furthermore, the documentary's availability on streaming platforms like Philo, along with its traditional lifetime broadcast, reflects the evolving landscape of media consumption. Offering a 10-day trial followed by a subscription fee, Philo's model underscores the commercialization of true crime and biographical documentaries. This accessibility can democratize viewership, allowing a broader audience to engage with the content. However, it also exemplifies the intersection of media, commerce, and tragedy, where stories of real-life suffering become products for consumption. In conclusion, the life and murder of Nicole Brown Simpson carries the potential to contribute meaningfully to the public's understanding of Nicole's life and legacy. However, its success hinges on its ability to navigate the fine line between respectful storytelling and sensationalism. By focusing on Nicole's personal story and amplifying the voices of those who knew her, the documentary can offer a more holistic and empathetic portrayal. Yet, 
the ethical implications of revisiting such a traumatic event for commercial purposes cannot be ignored. As viewers, we must approach this documentary with a critical eye, recognizing both its potential value and the broader cultural dynamics it reflects.